1947 Harley hasn't run in over 60 years. And this morning, Chris and I decided that's long enough. You guys know this is the museum that runs and we can't have idle motorcycles here. So this motorcycle's been sitting in the Wheels Through Time Museum in the back of the junkyard exhibit for 10 or almost 15 years. Rumor has it the bike was running when parked. So we're gonna jump right in, Chris and I, and see if we can breathe some life back into this old Harley. This bike was obviously balled up and mangled at some point in its life. The bars are bent, the forks bent, the seats all bent up. I don't even know how you bend a seat like that. The fender's all torn up, it's missing the muffler. Foot control and foot rests are bent all to heck. This thing definitely had a tough life. Well, I mean, as bent as that floorboard is on that side, they're way sturdier than stock floorboards. And for them to be that bent, this thing had it, to be tore up. Oh yeah. This is actually a WLA crankcase vent. Theoretically, you could ride this thing underwater up to the top of the crankcase vent. It's a pretty neat piece. Enduro race bike, it makes total sense. Still got the old dash on it, but the speedos and the switches have all been robbed. We'll probably have to hot wire it. Mm -hmm. No kickstand. Emblems are gone. Really cool knobby tire. Two ply, 418. Goodyear sure grip. Check that out, guys. That's cool. Look. So that tire may be past its prime here, but we're gonna ride it anyway. That tire's got at least five to 10 burnouts left in its <laughs> lifetime. It's got your, I don't even know what to call this. <laughs> that's coming off. Yeah, that's, that's not something you want to experience when you ride doing a burnout. Yeah, we're gonna get this bad boy lubricated, get all the nuts and bolts as loose as we can. What do the inside of these gas tanks look like? Oh, nice. This original parkerizing inside. The oil tank is usually as clean or cleaner than the gas tank. Yep, no rust in there. Nice and oily. Got the original dipstick. Yeah. It's crazy how it works. It's all how they've been stored. This thing was bought out west by our pal Barry from Decatur, Illinois, and Barry brought it to the antique swap meet at, in Davenport. This thing was a last minute Sunday find, rolled it in the trailer. It's been sitting ever since. And when we bought it, it kicked over and had compression. It's an odd sound. Yeah, that's not a good sound. And I'm just now starting to realize it's a little bit further away from, <laughs> from running than I thought it was gonna be. So I think our first order of business, Chris, I mean, we kicked it over, it kicks, it moves. Mm -hmm. The squeak is something I'm not liking and I feel like we're gonna have to really dig into this engine, but let's start lubing everything up with right. Croil yeah. and see if we can get all of the nuts and bolts loose. I mean, this thing is caked with 80 year old grime. It's an old enduro racer that was raced out of California. Yellow Jackets Motorcycle Club bike. It was really stripped bare bones for racing. So by the end of the day, my plan is to be doing burnouts outside in the parking lot. So let's get going, Chris. No brake cable, wait. Is that a double clutch? Yeah. No doubt. Cool. So he set that up to pull the clutch. Pretty neat. Okay, it's a hand and a foot clutch. This is real race bike stuff. Wow. This is gonna be interesting. It's gonna be a lot of work. <laughs> All right. You know, I think the next thing to do, we really ought to just- Get it on the lift. Put it on the lift and start going through the systems. This is gonna be a chore. Get her up here. Yep. Let's strap it down too, Chris. Yep. All right, I think the first order of business, the wiring on this thing's a mess. So let's go ahead, we're gonna pull the tanks off and it's gonna give us a clearer shot at what we're looking at. Okay. Um, and then we can start knocking off the punch list. We got brakes, brake cable. Definitely gonna have to look at the carburetor. We could try and do it without even rebuilding that carburetor. Checking the points, what do we got here? Oh wow, that looks freaking beautiful. Look at that, look how rusty this whole engine looks. Rusty, crusty, inside. It's like brand new. Look at this, Chris. The cap did its job. Yeah, the cap did its job. How about that? I know you guys have heard me say it before. You need compression, you need spark, and you need fuel to get one of these motorcycles fired up. But the thing is, we want to ride it, so inevitably there's going to be plenty of extra that we've got to get sorted on this motorcycle before we can take it out. I don't think I want to take it on the road. <laughs> no, I think, I think the parking lot will be just parking fine Parking lot's fine. There's a big mountain up behind us. As long as we go uphill, if it breaks, we can roll, roll downhill. 
pounds. There so you go. <laughs> whether this thing's got 90 pounds of compression or 105 pounds of compression, it's a Harley flathead. Yeah, it's it doesn't run. matter much. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't take much to get them going. So let's go ahead, let's pull the plugs, do the finger test. Okay. After that, we try and sort the wiring. This we got the a battery spark. charger. We'll put the battery charger, see what it's going to take to get spark at the points. Mm -hmm. And if those two things go well, we're looking at fuel. fuel. That's to run it. Yeah. And then controls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. There you are. So rusty, crusty motorcycle, obviously running at some time before we got it. I don't know how long ago. This is one of those things right here. We're going to be able to tell a lot. And the spark plug is a little sooty, but it's not white powdery. It sure wasn't running lean, but it wasn't running rich, rich either. either. Yeah. What's it look like in there, Chris? Can you see anything? A little bit of rust there on top of the... the top of the valve? Top of the valve, yeah. Yeah, top. Oily. This is that croil that we've been spraying on it. Compression, Chris, give it a kick. It's coming up, but it ain't a lot. That is not a lot of compression. How about the rear? Yeah. Oh yeah, man, yeah. Well, um, you know, that's that, where we thought that squeak was coming from too. It's so. a noisy one. Yeah. First off, let's raise it up. Yeah. We'll loosen the lifters and watch what they're doing. All right, so if the bike doesn't have compression, it's not gonna run, or at least if one cylinder is not gonna run. Two cylinder engine, we've got compression on the back. If we don't have compression on the front, the engine will still potentially run, It'll run terrible. Without compression on the front cylinder, it's not gonna draw air. It's also not gonna create any, any sort of squeeze to where the combustion's gonna do anything to that piston. You get combustion inside of that front cylinder there and it's gonna blow by the rings and all your power is not gonna be captured by the piston and transferred to the crankshaft. So if we don't have compression, Compression, fixing it is a whole nother ball of wax. Is that a thing, a ball of wax? I think so. Yeah, okay, yeah, sure. cool. <laughs> so yeah, so it's a whole nother ball of wax. We gotta potentially pull the head off, maybe pull the valves, and it starts to get really hairy and involved from there. So might be a matter of minutes, we'll have the whole engine torn out on the table over there. So this thing is grimy, that's for sure, man. The Harley Davidson WL started in 1937 and it was really a refinement of the, the small Harley flathead which started in 1929. 37, they added this circulating oil pump and a scavenge pump down below which circulated oil from the tank down throughout the engine and back up to the tank. Extended oil life, extended engine life. Made for a machine much lighter on maintenance. They ran that motor pretty much unmodified or unchanged all the way through 1973 or 1974 uh, on the Servi cars, three-wheel jobs. They quit the two-wheel versions of the WLs in 1952 and started K-Model Summer. <laughs> <laughs> we need a new distributor bale. That's broken, but it all moves nicely. We'll have to retime it since that distributor bale is broken. Thanks, Chris. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these floorboards off. There's a lot to break on a pair of Harley floorboards. Uh, the floorboard cleats, which fasten it to the bike, are riveted to the, the board itself. This is indestructible. Oh. It's a little bent. We'll flatten it out and get these uh, sitting back pretty flat. I don't think it'll take much. Part. They do have the whole charging system still intact on this, which is interesting. Generator, relay. Yeah, would, would most guys in this era have switched out to a mag? To a mag, you know, that's the, you know, they were, they were running this thing through the water. In that sense, a battery and points makes more sense than a magneto, because when you get those magnetos wet, they don't want to do much. So what we're looking for, guys, that little bit of movement right there. My icrometer tells me that's about four to six thousandths of an inch. This one, that one's a little looser. So exhaust always a little bit looser than the intakes. Yeah, the head's coming off. So it's the only way to do it. It'd be a shame to put all this work into trying to get it running and it's gonna be so low on compression that it won't, won't even fire on that cylinder, so. What's that primary look like? It's not bad. Chain's loose, yeah. chain's oily. That's good. A little bit of up and down. Big sprocket on there. 
27, 28 teeth. First glance, I don't think we gotta disturb that, Chris. Okay. It would sure be nice to know if that clutch separates. Let's go ahead and we'll leave everything off. Look at that, how freaking awesome is that? They've actually cut a drain out. And this primary cover's been beat up and abused so many times they welded a plate on it down low. That's so cool. All right, look at this. Walnut. Okay. There it is, the oil tank, big shell in there. So you got about three and a half quarts of oil over on this side, the gas tank, three and a half gallons of gas. Okay. You know, th what, what year is it, by the way? It's, it's uh, 45 WL, yeah. It's a 45, mm -hmm. so it's not a 47. Yeah. 1945. What, what, where's the serial number? 672. These are WLA cases. They're WLA cases. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the green. Yeah, so these are like military surplus cases. Mm -hmm. I wonder what the belly numbers are. Can you read anything down there? Oh yeah, 40. Four. 44, late set of WLA re replacement cases. They made 70, 80,000 motorcycles. They made even more spare parts. So for years and years, uh, guys would replace stuff using those old military parts. Being an old race bike, this thing could have been blown up any number of times. This is not the original set of engine cases, which I'd kind of think that potentially the, he might have just snagged a whole NOS motor. Mm -hmm. Like they might have, because these are number five heads. Yeah. So that, you know, race bikes typically, a WR has a higher compression head than this. Enduro bike, you don't necessarily, it's endurance. You don't yeah, you really don't necessarily want compression because yeah. the heat is the enemy of flathead and compression builds heat. So these have the number five heads. Check this out, guys. Let's see where it says number five on each of these heads. So those are the five to one lower compression heads. You can look, you can see them from a mile away when you know what you're looking at because you can see all this distance in between the fin of the cylinder and the bottom of the head right there. When it's a low compression head, there's you can about stick a finger in there. When it's a high compression head, that distance is much smaller. So we're gonna go ahead and get the head pulled off and get first glance in what's inside of this engine. It's gonna be kind of neat to see. Hopefully it doesn't have a hole in the piston because we don't have compression. Moment of truth. Ooh. Yeah, look at this carbon. It's like caked on there. You can't even get it off with your finger. What I think we need to do, let's go ahead and try and burn some of this off. Grab the best razor blade we got. Okay. We're gonna scrape the top of the piston um, and see what the seeds look like. Oh yeah, look at there, that top of that piston is beautiful. I'll be darned. Whoa, no way, that's a standard bore. It's standard bore, man. I would be willing to bet that this motor has never been into. It's very, very possible. Nowadays we look at all these engines as infinitely rebuildable, but the reality is, is back then, man, this stuff was replaceable. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you wear an engine out, you lock an engine up, you just pull it out and put a new one in. All right, let's kick this thing over. The top of that piston looks so good. It's like if we can get by without pulling the cylinder, now it's gonna be interesting to see what the sides of the cylinder wall looks like. Piston up at the top. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what, we should cut these valves while it's all together. Yeah, I think that's our problem, dude. I think it's from the trash that's accumulated on those seats. Mm -hmm. Can you see and rust it, on the valve? There is. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what it was. Yep. I probably have NOS valves mm -hmm. that will use some brand new valves. We're we're in. Let's just let's just start cranking on it, Chris. Ah! Harley Davidson Genuine factory tools. Supplied brand new with these motors, probably. That wasn't the one that was leaking. Oh! That's what was leaking. I bet you anything it was this rust right here. So we're gonna do a quick valve job. So so now that we're on 45s, 
Does that mean we're going to keep this trend and work on that special project we were talking about the other day? That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> you, you guys just put it in the comments whether you think we should stick with 45s for a while because there's a really cool project. I don't want to say too much about, but I know that you'll love it. So Chris you has been dying to work on it. 45 was my first bike, so I, I like them. Yeah, uh, well, I think you're probably on to something. Let's go ahead. We've got this top of this here pretty clean. And by pretty clean, I mean in comparison to the rest of the bike. <laughs> Clean, cleaner than it was. Cleaner than it was. What happens when a valve stays open and an engine sits for 50, 60, 70 years or more, moisture gets to whichever valve that was, whether it's through the exhaust pipe or through the carburetor on the intake or the exhaust pipe on the exhaust and the valve rusts, the seat rusts. So when it comes back down, you want a total seal there and any sort of rust or obstruction in between the seat and the head of the valve isn't going to allow for that. So what we've got here is our new way valve cutters. Now, really cool story about this setup right here. This was actually Leonard Andres's new way valve cutting set that my dad got from Leonard and Brad. Now, Leonard was a Daytona winning tuner. He actually tuned seven Daytona winning motorcycles, worked on 45s, used to race WRs and WLs just like this. His son was national champion. Leonard tuned for Cal Rayborn. He tuned for Joe Leonard, tuned for his son, Brad. There's a lot of history right here in this box. This box and these tools were one of the things that made some of the fastest Harley Davidson flatheads ever. And you know, cut and valves it's not that fun of a job but when you get to channel so many experts my pops leonard andres brad andres the, the hands that have been in these tools makes you want to build and makes you want to build better so the way that this works guys is we've got a dowel that's sized to the thousandth of an inch to that valve guide so when you slide it in it's slightly tapered it fits absolutely perfectly and tightly and then we use our cutter, little stones here, blades, uh, 45 degrees, and we'll go ahead and cut in that valve. The goal is to take absolutely as little as possible because the depth of those valves is crucial to how a machine runs and operates. A couple pounds of pressure is all it takes. You don't have to push hard. Now, I can't make a full rotation on this because we're still in the frame, so I have to keep picking it up and resetting it. See what kind of progress we're making. Ah, oh, yeah. See, we're almost there. What you're looking for is that shiny all the way around. And we hardly had to take anything out so far. Pretty good. I'm gonna touch it one more time. So I'm in total rotations, guys. I bet you I didn't spin this thing five, five times. times. Yeah. yeah, five full rotations. I'm happy there, man. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Look at that. See how nice and shiny that is, guys? What kind of carb we got? Uh, M51. M51 Linkert carburetor. Spin? Yeah. Nice. Spins there. Yeah, you might crawl, 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 crawl them up. up. Oh, yeah. they put a piece of wire on that, too, so it wouldn't turn. That's cool. See, there's a piece of wire wrapped around there just so once they got it positioned where they wanted it, vibration would it wouldn't take it away. Wouldn't take it away. It's, that's probably, honestly, like looking down through the throat. Probably one of the cleanest carburetors I've seen on an old bike. It looks like a rebuilt carburetor. It looks like a rebuilt carburetor. Saving us time. This will probably be real careful and bead blast the inside of. Scrape that combustion chamber out. Okay, new valves. Come on, I know just the spot. So we got a place completely apart. The museum, we were doing fire suppression system this winter and it's chaos. There's stuff moved around everywhere. Just the other day, they finished up back here in the swim shop and Chris and I got everything put back together. Indeed, there is some new old stock Harley Davidson components, dash 32. So there's an inlet. We need an exhaust valve. Exhaust. Boom. You can't beat genuine Harley Davidson components. There are companies that remake these valves today, but when you can use the real thing, that's what we want to do. Got them. All right. 
So you know what I think? What? So where it's at on the clutch mechanism over there, yeah. like it doesn't have enough torque to pull it. So what I think what he was doing was just It's using, just a holder. Yeah, it's just That's like right. once you pull this in, you can, you can hold sit there and that. hold it and it'll hold it and then you can let it go. So he was just... Right, so yeah. he would heal it down. And then if he needed hold, to sit... Hold that, let this back. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It was a starter clutch. Starter clutch. A starter clutch. Yeah, yeah so for, you didn't have yeah. to do the... Yeah. That's right. Cool. Yeah, I and mean, so once you pull that, you can see it now. It... Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's what we're looking for, separation of the clutch plates. So, um, valves, let's check them out. What do we got here? Chris, these were... NOS in the swim shop, which we just got all set back up and looking pretty. I try and do as little damage to the box as possible. Look at that. How cool is this? Harley Davidson intake valve, US military surplus. All right, let's see. I'm gonna leave a tag in that one. Wrapped in Cosmoline. So cool. All right. Bingo. First person to see these valves in. I bet the I bet the date they were packed is on there. First person to see them since 1942. We're not taking shortcuts here. This is how it was designed to be done. In the slot out, lapping compound. All right, we're going with the 220 grit, which sometimes I'll use a couple different grits to lap in a pair of valves, this being a utility engine and being that we didn't replace the guides themselves, we're just gonna use the intermediate. I think we'll see that it comes in real nice. I'll show you guys what we're looking for. Uh, lapping in the valve, what we're doing is making a perfect seat. We cut a 45 degree angle. The valve is 45 degree angle. We actually cut a 46 degree angle. Valve's a 45 degree angle, but you really wanna lap that thing in. So you've got an abrasive compound here. You can hear it grinding. A uh, little bit of back and forth, lift, a little bit of back and forth, lift, a little bit of back and forth. This is a difficult to feel, but what we'll be looking at is the gray band around the valve, and we'll be looking for that to be nice and even. So here we are, and gray band around the center of the valve. The unlapped valve to the lapped valve, guys. Real shiny here uh, as machine surface. And then this is your lapped surface, which is pretty good. Get him a beard can. Okay, let's see how we're looking here. Beard cam. <laughs> I think we're pretty solid. Good deal. You got the blue? Yep. Nice. All right. So this is just a die that transfers really well. And we'll spread it on the seat. And then we'll slap this valve closed. So what you're looking for... And it's a little up towards the edge of the seat because we did cut it. But what you're looking for is, see, there's 360 degrees right there all the way around the seat. So that tells us full seat. Watch this. Look, it's everywhere. <laughs> all right. So there's one. One down. Let me lap in number two. Beautiful. I'll take it. This is the fun part. Just squeezing those valve springs and keepers back in. So, still using as many of the original components as we can. Here we go. This is the hard part, which is not fun to do is getting the keepers in there. You need little bitty, little bitty baby fingers. That is the tough part. We'll just use the grease. But just like that. There it is. There it is. There it is right there. 
One down. There's your float bowl. There's the float bowl. Hello. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah. Glorious, so what we'll do is we'll ditch this old cork float here. I think it's right all old and dried out. We'll get that fixed here in a few. Get this second valve in, adjust our lifters, and we're set. What are you doing over here? Huh? What are you doing? Oh, over I'm here? just just killing time. <laughs> yep. And yep. Got it. Bam. Ta-da! I don't have a matchbook, so I'm gonna use my feeler gauge. All right, so exhaust, six to eight thousandths. Okay. Oh, we're real close. Okay. I'll take it. There we are. There's our four. I love it, man. Okay, let's tighten these bad boys back up, and keep them sealed. Then we're ready to bolt the head back on with the fresh gasket and then do our compression test. We're still a bit from running this bike. I mean, we made big progress, but for actuality, we've really just made one big leap forward. You sure you want to run this rear tire? Yes, dude, that tire has mile left in it. <laughs> <laughs> mile. Speed rated. Yep. 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 Compression test. I'll climb up. Chris, you want right. to put a finger on it? Yep. There we go. Yep. Oh yeah. Just to show you, make it a testament to the equipment. We're not even gonna clean them. Now we need to see what it's gonna be to get spark. Let's grab that, the uh, battery. battery charger. I'll get a jump wire. Yikes, look at this. What is that? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Hot to the coils over here running off this wiring harness. So we got our hot here. Yeah. Oh, oh man, I heard it from here. We're about to blow our battery charger up. Okay, that's good. Do we have spark at the plug? Oh yeah, look at that, bam! That is a hot coil, bro, look at that. Oh my gosh. Okay, so. Compression, check. We put the battery charger to it. We had spark at the points and we had spark at the plug. So two out of three so far. Now we need fuel. So let's run through the fuel system. And the fuel line's clear, so. Fuel line is clear. And how close are we to running this bike? You'll just have to wait and see. 45 minutes. <laughs> 45 minutes. All right, 45 minutes, what you got? All right, yep. We got our new distributor bale. We will have to time it again, Chris. Yeah. So um, we'll save that for last. I'm gonna get this float bowl squared away. This is my messy carburetor table. As you guys can see, there's no semblance of order. That's how I work best is organizations for losers. So this is a nitrofill float. And they never sink, but what they do do is if you over tighten that screw, they do crack. And you end up making a few $40 mistakes before you get it just right. So Chris, no, we, you had the main nozzle spring and all that? Yeah, right here, yep. Perfect, man, good condition too, mm -hmm. huh? There she blows. Man, the Venturi's even loose in there. Pew. Cool, we'll set that once we get the, the tanks mm -hmm. back on and the fuel line done. So what you think we need now is yeah. the- uh, I think if we straighten that pedal. Man, that sucker's long too. Um, straighten the pedal, a hot wire, or at least install a switch. And then we've got some general hookups down low. We've got our gas tanks. This is easy though. The old channel locks. 
That'll do her. Okay. Okay, we got brakes. We got brakes. I'll tell you what, dude, it looks a lot better with those floorboard deals leveled out. Yeah. Both sides. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Yeah, once we get the tanks back on there. Um, <clears throat> cool, man. We're going to turn this into a jump bike. Once again, let's go ahead and plug this in and do some testing. Okay, now try it. Okay. Oh, there it is. That's our hot wire. Yeah. Okay, so that's the hot. I'm gonna get a switch, Chris. Mm -hmm. Insulate those. If you wanna get a battery from something inside. Mm -hmm. So it's not uncommon uh, when we need a battery, we might pull it from another bike in the museum. Everything in here does run. We don't run everything all the time, so there's no need for there to be an active battery in every bike in the museum. We just kind of float them around from whatever project we're working on, whatever bike we're gonna be running for the season. I'm not running mine right now, so we're gonna swipe mine out of my 1950 45, put it in to the 45 45. We'll just uh, check it the fun way, start it up. That'll work. Uh, you got positive on your side. Yeah. Yep. You can see the end in sight. Now that seat post is not connected anymore. Oh, down, no yeah. way. Well, maybe it is. It, it is? Just, yeah, it just has, it just had a lot of play in it. Easy, buddy. <laughs> 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 All right, here we go. Ready to flick those points, Chris. Mm -hmm. Nothing yet, right? Nope. How about now? I can hear it in the coil. Yeah. Okay, gas tanks, <laughs> then gas. And we better put oil in it too. Yeah, and we gotta put, uh, I checked the trans earlier and it needs some oil too. The trans yeah. needs oil. Good, this one is in. Cool, we'll get this other one set. Yeah, we're 50, 52 minutes behind our 45 minutes. Ready? So we've kind of done everything that I think we can do so far other than hook up the spark advance and time it. Good deal. Do you want any more oil in the bottom end? There was some in there. There was some in there, and I, it's, I don't really want to put any more in the bottom end because I'm sure it's loaded. Ow. Okay. Nice. Oil. Man, this thing looks like a lot better bike than when we rolled it onto this lift. Yeah. Man, it's been, I've been waiting 15 years anyway. It's one of those bikes that... When we bought it, the plan was like, ah, oh, man, this is gonna be great. We're gonna get right on it. And 15 years later, here we are. And right on uh, it. <laughs> right on it. <laughs> I think it's ready for gas. You grab a screwdriver and knock that float bowl if you would. No leaks so far. The old unvented race fuel can. Taking longer to fill the bike up than it did to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. All right, how many kicks? Four. Four? After, after the, after prime. I'm gonna bet. Three kicks and one to prime. Right, you wanna go? put yeah. a fiver on it? <laughs> sure. All right, you're kicking. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna put my face by the carburetor. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. I think we are just prime kicking, so we're gonna prime it until we got fuel. Let me see here. Nothing yet. That's cool. Nothing yet. That's all right. Nothing yet. Let me use the fuel pump. Good 
go ahead. We're, we, there's the gas we needed. Okay, give it two, three kicks. One, two, three. There's our prime kicks. Give it, you can go throttle on, or key on, two clicks, some gas. Come on. Oh! Go ahead. Runs, you can hear it needs back pressure. You hear how flat it is when mm -hmm. we're revving it. Yep. We'll try and dig out a muffler. It ought to be easy enough to install. I think I'll have to loosen up that skid plate. Actually, Chris, if you want to start loosening up the skid plate, okay. I think I got just the muffler for it. Then we can take it out and ride it, hopefully. So we need a muffler. We need to fire it back up and see if we can get it in gear. Okay. And then if we can get it in gear and we can go ride it, we just got to pray that the tires <laughs> don't together. blow out. Yeah. So. I've seen worse. Usually they're in a junkyard, but this thing came from a junkyard. So muffler right here. We'll just keep this thing low since we're about to roll it right off the lift. Chris, I've got, uh, I'll get two bolts, one up front and then maybe back here if you need to, but you okay. might just be able to get away with loosening that front one up. Okay. Um, five sixteenths. I'm itching to ride this motorcycle. It's just total beater. It looks like a tank. You can tell this thing has been through the ringer over and over again, I would imagine. But first fire, it sounds pretty good. And we'll see how it goes. That muffler's been sitting on a shelf for maybe as long as the bike has. We all the way? One more tap. Yeah, you're right there. <laughs> it changes the whole look of the bike. It does, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. Can you get the front? Yep. All right. I think it's ready. Well, now, now, what do we think it's gonna sound like? I think it's ready for another uh, another go round. It hasn't leaked a drop of oil yet. Yeah. Or all, fuel. All the oils. That's all croil. But, yeah. That's off the chain. Yeah, and the only I, I, I doused the chain before. Doused the chain. Yeah. Yeah. Which that chain may have needed a little more than dousing, but we're <laughs> gonna find out. Uh, <laughs> Oh, it had an air cleaner cover too, huh? Yeah. Let's go ahead and put the air cleaner cover back on. I've got two screws. I just found two more. Uh, There's one broke off in here. One's so we just broke need off, one. so yeah. you need one and maybe, are there any tabs on that? Yes, if I, uh, not on the bottom, I've got two. <laughs> How are you supposed to fold over all 16 tabs if they're broken, Chris? <laughs> If you got a tab, yo, I'll fold it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that an Ice Ice Baby reference? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you got a tab, yo, I'll fold it. <laughs> I'd like to stay hip on the new tree. Yeah, I'm really, dude, I'm trying to stay up with the freshest lyrics <laughs> from 1989. You didn't know this was a music channel, too, did you? I was like, man, I like the muffler, dude. We don't even have to patine into that. Oh. Okay. oh. We could tighten that. <laughs> We're supposed to figure these things out. Be well, I mean, we haven't ridden it yet, but. Well, but I think <laughs> it wasn't that loose when we. Uh, no, when we started, it, it wasn't that, that loose. loose. Yeah. So I guess just heat, heat cycling it. Has, now uh, try it. Yeah. Better? Yeah. Okay, there's a little bit. Starting to wonder what else is gonna fall off of this thing when we start. <laughs> well, we've already lost at least uh, a pound and a half of rust and dust in the bottom. Rust and <laughs> dust on the lift, yeah. Don't, hey, save that. Let's fire it up. Ready? Check. Sounds way better. Oh yeah. 
you can feel it's a little, it, yeah. that the back, back pressure point. helps. The back pressure definitely helps. Okay, now will it go in gear? Yeah, okay. If it doesn't go in gear, we'll roll it back on the lift and we'll take the transmission out. You know, that's about all there is to do. Um, oh my God, these handlebars are so bent. Can you see that? See how bent these are? Ooh, good break. Will it go in gear? You know what? Maybe the clutch is, maybe it's just adjustment. I got an idea. Shift, shifter and clutch? Yeah, shifter, it needs shifter adjustment. Yeah, I just need more, so that will wind me in. I, th I think we need another shift gate. This one's not right. This shift gate's got reverse pattern in it. Let's put a different one on. So I think what we do is we go first. Oh, could it be any better? Look at that. This old girl's kind of tired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If we can just get this sucker in gear, I think we'll be all right. Okay, now we're in first. All right, so now we're in gear. We just gotta get that clutch to pull. Okay. We did nothing to the clutch yet. Maybe miraculously, it was just the sloppy linkage. It could have been, it could have been. It just needs a little more pull. Um, it sucker's tired, dude. <laughs> you just ride it and you're like, don't blow up. Don't blow up. How are the tire's holding up? I'm not worried about that front tire. No, that I front mean, tire's brand You've not new. lost any big chunks out of the back tire, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can, by God. <laughs> Especially a tired 45. <laughs> brakes work. Good. Brakes work good. Yeah. Brakes, it's the only thing that works good is the brakes. Um, we'll save that clutch for another day, man. Jump on it, right? Wait. Who owes who five bucks though? Well, we knew because it wasn't. Uh, we we went way over the count. <laughs> 
Make sure you watch the next couple videos, guys, right here. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch up with you next time. <laughs> that sucker's so tired. You give it gas and it's like, okay. <laughs> this, is right. the, this is the ER yeah, yeah, 45. Right. That's right. That's its new name is Eeyore. <laughs> All right. Go get Eeyore. <laughs>